Hello, my name is Yorgo Gushi. I am a qualified professional with a Bachelor of Science and a Master of Science degree from Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Electrical and Computer Engineering. My expertise lies in the areas of wireless communications and signal processing, which have been the focal points of my academic and professional journey. I would like to welcome you to the second lecture of the Generalized and System Architecture of 5G Microcourse. In Lecture 2, we are going to introduce 5G downlink as a concept and dive deeper into its characteristics. Let me start by giving a brief overview of Lecture 2. We will start with a recap of the most important concepts covered in Lecture 1, then we will proceed with an introduction to the architecture of 5G downlink, dive deeper into the 5G physical downlink channels, cover the concept of downlink control information, or DCI, and then describe the 5G downlink transport channels. We will end the lecture with an overview of the modulation and coding schemes in 5G downlink. In the first lecture of this microcourse, we talked about the evolution of wireless communication technologies, the differences between 5G and 4G LTE, and the 5G protocol stack. Further, we discussed the different ways of connecting in a 5G network and the fundamental concepts of the 5G Medium Access Control, or MAC. Before we get into the lecture, a quick disclaimer. Please note that while there exist various modeling and analysis tools for 5G, within the scope of this microcourse, our references are specifically related to the utilization of the 5G toolbox from the MathWorks. Let's start with some information about 5G downlink. 5G downlink refers to the communication link within a 5G wireless network through which data is transmitted from the network's base station to user devices such as smartphones, tablets, and other connected devices. Some key characteristics of 5G downlink include higher data rates. 5G downlink offers significantly higher data transmission rates compared to previous generations of wireless technology. 5G downlink aims to minimize latency, which is the delay in data transmission. 5G downlink is designed to handle a massive number of connected devices simultaneously, making it suitable for applications involving the Internet of Things and smart cities. It utilizes a range of frequency bands, including both sub-6 GHz and millimeter wave bands. 5G downlink uses advanced modulation schemes, such as higher order quadrature amplitude modulation, which are employed to encode more data into each transmitted symbol. Some key components of the 5G downlink architecture include the base station, which is also known as the GNB or Next Generation Node B, which is a critical component of 5G networks. It serves as a central point for communication between user devices and the core network. 5G GNBs are designed to support significantly higher data rates to meet the increasing demand for data-intensive applications such as streaming, video conferencing, and virtual reality. Additionally, they support a large number of simultaneous connections, which is crucial for accommodating the vast number of Internet of Things devices and supporting crowded urban areas. The Radio Access Network encompasses the infrastructure of base stations, including GNBs. To address coverage and capacity challenges, small cells are deployed. The latter are low-power base stations that enhance network capacity and coverage in specific localized areas. The 5G network architecture includes a hierarchy of channels that play crucial roles in the communication process. We start with the logical channels. They operate at the highest level in the 5G channel hierarchy and are closely related to the application layer. They define how data is organized and segmented for specific services and applications. We then proceed to the transport channels. They sit above the physical channels in the hierarchy and are responsible for error correction, retransmissions, and multiplexing or demultiplexing of data. These channels ensure reliable data transfer between the GNode B and the user equipment. We then have the physical channels. They are the lowest level in the 5G channel hierarchy and deal directly with the physical layer of the network. They represent the actual radio waves and electromagnetic signals transmitted over the air between the transmitter and the receiver. Let's proceed with the concept of 5G downlink physical channels. 5G new radio or 5G NR defines a set of physical downlink channels 
that facilitate the transmission of data and control information from the network to user devices. The physical downlink channels in 5G and R are divided into two main categories, control channels and data channels. Control channels carry signaling and control information, while data channels transmit user data. Some important 5G NR physical downlink channel types include PDSCH or physical downlink share channel, which carries user data and operates based on resource allocation. We have PDCCH or physical downlink control channel, which carries downlink control information like scheduling assignments and hybrid automatic repeat request feedback. We have PBCH or physical broadcast channel, which carries system information and provides initial synchronization for the devices. The physical downlink shared channel is a fundamental physical channel responsible for carrying user data from the base station to user devices, such as smartphones and IoT devices. The term shared indicates that multiple users share this channel's resources simultaneously. The PDSCH employs advanced techniques like orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, or OFDM, and multiple antenna technologies to ensure robust data transmission. It operates in various frequency bands, including the revolutionary millimeter wave spectrum, offering an excellent balance between coverage and capacity. Let's share some key concepts about the physical downlink share channel. Resource allocation in PDSCH is dynamic and adaptive. Time, frequency, and spatial resources are assigned according to user needs. This flexibility allows the network to allocate more resources to users with higher demand, ensuring fair distribution and optimal throughput. PDSCH data is mapped onto OFDM symbols, each symbol representing a group of subcarriers. Modulation schemes like quadrature phase shift keying and 256 QAM are employed to encode data efficiently, achieving higher data rates and spectral efficiency. PDSCH benefits from beamforming, focusing signals towards users to enhance signal quality. Massive MIMO with multiple antennas at both ends further improves channel reliability and overall performance. At the heart of 5G NR's downlink communication lies the physical downlink control channel, the command center directing data transmission to user devices. PDCCH handles scheduling assignments, link quality indications, power control commands, and other critical control information. The PDCCH operates within the frequency range allocated for control channels, ensuring seamless interaction with user devices. To accommodate varying control information sizes, PDCCH uses aggregation, combining multiple control bits into larger coded blocks. These blocks are then mapped to physical resources, optimizing the channel's efficiency. PDCCH resource allocation is dynamic and adaptive as well, ensuring efficient usage of spectrum and accommodating diverse user requirements. It employs techniques like control channel element aggregation and dynamic assignment to enhance flexibility. User devices continuously monitor the PDCCH to detect control information intended for them. A two-stage process involving blind search and demodulation allows devices to locate and decode PDCCH messages. The PDCCH carries information about the scheduling of data transmission, identifying user devices through unique identifiers. It grants permission for devices to access the PDSCH and communicates essential control commands. The physical broadcast channel operates as a broadcast channel transmitting system information that every user device within the cell needs to access and understand the network. The PBCH provides a synchronization signal, helping user devices synchronize their timing with the network. This synchronization is vital for accurate data transmission and reception. The PBCH broadcasts the cell identity, a unique identifier for the cell. User devices use this information to differentiate between neighboring cells. Information about the frame structure, including the number of slots, subframes, and their arrangement is conveyed via the physical broadcast channel. 
This helps user devices understand the timing and structure of the network. The PBCH's primary mission is to transmit the Master Information Block, or MIB. This block holds critical network configuration parameters, acting as a blueprint for devices to access and operate within the network. The MIB contains information such as the cell's identity, frame structure, subcarrier spacing, and initial access configuration. By broadcasting the MIB, the PBCH ensures that all devices in the coverage area have access to the essential information they need to sync and communicate effectively. Beyond the MIB, the PBCH also serves a crucial function in synchronization. It carries synchronization signals that allow devices to achieve precise timing and frequency alignment with the network. To ensure reliable and efficient information delivery, the PBCH is allocated dedicated resources for transmission. Downlink control information refers to the set of essential control messages and signaling that are transmitted from a cellular network's base station, eNode B or GNB, to user devices or UEs in a wireless communication system. DCI serves as a means of communication between the network and the devices to manage various aspects of the downlink transmission, including resource allocation, scheduling, power control, and more. DCI messages carry information about how radio resources, such as time slots, frequency bands, and spatial resources, are allocated to specific user devices for receiving data. DCI informs user devices about when they can expect to receive data. It includes details about which channel or resource will be used to transmit the upcoming data. DCI messages can contain power control commands that instruct user devices to adjust their transmission power levels to optimize signal quality and network efficiency. DCI messages in wireless communication systems like LTE and 5G and R come in various formats. DCI messages in wireless communication systems like LTE and 5G and R come in various formats, each designed to convey specific information for managing downlink transmissions. Format 0 is a simple format used for broadcasting system information and synchronization signals. It typically includes information about cell identity and system configuration. Format 1 used for downlink scheduling assignments, specifying resources for data transmission to user devices. It includes information about resource blocks, modulation schemes, and transmission power. Format 2 carries information about semi-persistent scheduling assignments, where the resources are allocated periodically for specific application or services. Format 3 contains power control commands to instruct user devices on adjusting their transmission power levels to optimize signal quality and reduce interference. DCI messages are composed of bits organized into fields, each with a specific meaning and purpose. These fields carry information crucial for the operation and management of the wireless network. Here are some common DCI fields and their significance. DCI format indicator indicates the format type of the DCI message, helping the receiving device decode the message correctly. Frequency domain assignment specifies the frequency resources allocated for data transmission. Time domain assignment, it specifies the time resources, subframes or symbols allocated for data transmission. Resource allocation type, it specifies the type of resource allocation, such as localized or distributed. MCS, or modulation and coding scheme, which indicates the modulation and coding scheme to be used for the data transmission. TPC command, which carries power control commands, instructing the device to adjust its transmission power. Then we have the Downlink Assignment Index, or DAI, used to identify the scheduling assignment for user devices, especially in cases for carrier aggregation. A scheduling request, which indicates whether the device should send a scheduling request to the network. HRQ process number, which identifies the hybrid ARQ process, helping devices manage retransmissions. Precoding information, which carries information about beamforming and precoding for optimized signal reception. And at last, spatial assignment, 
specifies the spatial resources allocated for multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO transmission. In the architecture of 5G wireless communication, downlink control information is conveyed through the physical downlink control channel. DCI messages are mapped onto control channel elements, forming the fundamental units of transmission for control information. These CCEs are subsequently organized into control resource sets or core sets. Each CCE can carry a portion of the DCI message, making it possible to transmit multiple DCI messages within the same PDCCH resource. User devices use a technique known as blind decoding to detect the CCEs assigned to them and retrieve the relevant DCI information. This process involves examining the PDCCH resources and attempting to decode the CCEs without prior knowledge of the exact location or content of the DCI messages. By detecting the CCEs associated with their assigned resources, devices can uncover the instructions and commands sent by the network. DCI messages play a crucial role in instructing user devices about the optimal beamforming techniques to use. Beamforming involves directing a focused radio signal towards a specific user, effectively increasing signal strength and reducing interference. The DCI provides information that helps devices adjust the phase and amplitude of transmitted signals, ensuring the beam is aligned with the user's location for improved signal quality. DCI assists in orchestrating massive MIMO configurations. Massive MIMO leverages an array of multiple antennas at both the base station and user devices to simultaneously transmit and receive multiple data streams. DCI messages guide the coordination of antennas, ensuring that each device receives the appropriate data streams on different spatial paths. This technique enhances spectral efficiency by enabling parallel data transmission to multiple users and increases coverage due to the focused signals. DCI's role extends to the coordination of physical downlink share channel and physical uplink share channel transmissions, crucial components of 5G's downlink and uplink communication respectively. PDSCH carries downlink user data and DCI messages on the physical downlink control channel they are used to inform devices about allocated PDSCH resources. These resources include the specific time slots and frequency bands designated for delivering the data intended for each user. By conveying this information, DCI ensures synchronized data reception optimized for each device's unique requirements. Downlink transport channels play a pivotal role in ensuring effective communication between the network infrastructure and user devices. They serve as the vehicles for transmitting different types of information, including user-generated data, control messages, system information, and multimedia content. Without these channels, the seamless and reliable operation of wireless networks would be severely compromised. Some key characteristics of transport channels include diversity of services, Downlink transport channels are designed to cater to a diverse range of services with varying requirements, from latency-sensitive applications like voice calls to high-throughput data streaming. These channels must handle different types of traffic efficiency. Quality of service considerations. Quality of service is a critical aspect of downlink transport channels. Different services demand different levels of QoS, such as low latency for real-time applications or high throughput for data-intensive tasks. These channels must be able to prioritize and allocate resources accordingly. And last, adaptation to conditions. Downlink transport channels must adapt to changing channel conditions caused by factors like signal interference, fading, and mobility. Adaptive techniques like dynamic resource allocation and modulation adjustments ensure optimal performance even in challenging environments. There are five different transport channels. Some are used on the uplink, others on the downlink, and some can be used on both. We have the broadcast channel or BCH, the paging channel or PCH, the downlink share channel or DLSCH, the uplink share channel or ULSCH, and the Random Access Channel, or RATCH. 
The broadcast channel, or BCH, is the beacon that enables devices to synchronize with the 5G network's timing and frame structure. Through the BCH, user devices accurately align their internal clocks with the network schedule. This synchronization ensures that devices can receive and transmit data at the right time slots, minimizing interference and optimizing overall network efficiency. The BCH is the conduit for disseminating critical system information to user devices. This information includes cell identity, which uniquely identifies the cell within the network, allowing devices to recognize the serving cell and make informed connectivity decisions. Furthermore, it includes information uh, and details about the structure of radio frames and subframes, guiding devices in understanding the time division of the air interface. BCH conveys information about the allocation of frequency bands and resources for various channels, including data and control channels. Furthermore, it includes details about modulation schemes, coding rates and transmission power levels that devices should use for optimal communication. When devices power on or enter new geographical areas, they rely on the BCH to identify the cell's identity. This assists devices in selecting the appropriate cell to connect to based on a signal strength and quality. The BCH provides the necessary information for devices to initiate the process of connecting to the network. The BCH can be used to convey dynamic updates and reconfiguration instructions to devices. This ensures that devices stay up to date with changes in the network, such as modifications to frequency bands, handover instructions, and announcements about uh, network enhancements. The Downlink Share Channel The primary purpose of the Downlink Share Channel is to carry user-specific data from the network space station to user devices within a cell's coverage area. It serves as the primary conduit for delivering a wide array of user-generated data, including multimedia content, text, images, and more. DLSCH caters to the diverse data needs of user devices. From streaming high-definition videos to exchanging real-time messages, DLSCH ensures that devices receive the data they require in a timely and efficient manner. It's designed to accommodate a range of devices, applications, and data types, contributing to a seamless user experience. DLSCH operates with a dynamic resource allocation strategy. This means that resources such as time slots, frequency bands, and modulation schemes are assigned and adjusted based on individual device requirements, channel conditions, and the network load. This adaptability ensures that resources are utilized efficiently, optimizing data rates and minimizing interference. To enhance data transmission reliability, DLSEH employs Hybrid Automatic Repeat Request, or HARQ, which combines Automatic Repeat Request and Forward Error Correction, or FEC, techniques, allowing devices to request retransmissions of corrupted data segments. This contributes to the seamless delivery of error-free data to devices. The Random Access Channel serves as a gateway for user devices to initiate communication with the network in two main scenarios. The first scenario is initial connection setup. When a device first enters a cell's coverage area or powers on, it sends an access request through the Random Access Channels to establish an initial connection with the network. This marks the beginning of the communication process. The second scenario is the data transmission requests. Even after the initial connection, devices use the random access channel to request resources for transmitting data. For instance, when a device has data to send, it employs the random access channel to request resources for subsequent data transmission. One distinctive feature of the random access channel is its operation on a contention-based principle. Contention for access. The random access channel operates on a contention-based mechanism, meaning multiple devices may contend for access to the channel simultaneously. We have the transmission of random access preambles. Devices that wish to establish communication or transmit data send random access preambles through the random access channel. These preambles serve as a unique identifier for each device, indicating their intent to communicate. We have Network Managed Contention Resolution. 
The network manages contention resolution. If multiple devices transmit preambles simultaneously and a collision occurs, the network employs advanced algorithms to efficiently resolve the contention and allocate resources for successful communication. Preamble transmission serves as the mechanism through which devices request access to the network. Devices seeking network access transmit what we call random access preambles. These preambles hold a unique significance. They're like a virtual handshake between the device and the network. These preambles are not just random sequences. They carry vital information for both network synchronization and device identification. They allow the network to recognize the device's presence and synchronize its timing with the network. The magic of preamble transmission lies in the way it handles timing and resource allocation. Random timing slots. To reduce the likelihood of collisions and contention, devices transmit their preambles during randomly selected time slots. This randomness introduces the element of fairness and minimizes the chances of multiple devices choosing the same slot. The network plays a dynamic role here. It allocates resources specifically for the contention resolution process. These resources are intelligently managed to ensure efficient access for all devices attempting to communicate. Modulation and coding schemes stand as critical components of 5G's downlink with the primary goal of achieving efficient and reliable data transmission. These schemes work in tandem to strike a balance between data rate, spectral efficiency, and error performance, ensuring that the wireless communication is both fast and robust. Modulation is the process of mapping digital information, represented as bits, onto analog signals that can be transmitted over the air. In the context of 5G's downlink, a variety of modulation schemes are employed, each offering a different trade-off between data rate and robustness against noise and interference. Quadrature phase shift keying, or QPSK, is a foundational modulation scheme used extensively in wireless communication. It's a fundamental starting point for understanding modulation techniques. In QPSK, encodes two bits of information per symbol. It does this by dividing the symbol space into four phases, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. QPSK offers robustness against noise and interference due to its relatively large phase separation between symbols. This makes it particularly suitable for communication in noisy environments or over long distances. While QPSK provides a lower data rate per symbol compared to high-order schemes, its robustness makes it an excellent choice for scenarios where error resilience is crucial. 16 Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, or 16 QAM, builds upon the principles of QPSK by introducing more levels of amplitude variation in addition to phase variation. In 16 QAM, each symbol carries 4 bits of information. It combines four amplitude levels with four phase angles to create 16 distinct signals points in the constellation diagram. 16 QAM offers higher data rates compared to QPSK due to the increased number of bits per symbol. This higher data rate improves spectral efficiency by transmitting more bits within the same bandwidth. While 16 QAM provides higher data rates, it is more sensitive to noise and interference compared to QPSK. This trade-off between data rate and robustness needs to be carefully considered based on channel conditions. 64QAM builds upon the concepts of both QPSK and 16QAM, offering even higher data rates and more complex signal constellations. 64QAM encodes 6 bits of information per symbol. It utilizes 8 amplitude levels and 8 phase angles to create 64 signal points in the constellation diagram. Due to its increased number of bits per symbol, 64 QAM provides significantly higher data rates compared to both QPSK and 16 QAM. However, this advantage comes with increased sensitivity to noise and interference. As the constellation diagram becomes more complex, the demodulation process becomes more intricate, 
Receiver hardware needs to accurately decipher the received signals, potentially leading to higher computational requirements. Last, we have 256QAM, which takes the concept of higher order modulation to the next level, offering even higher data rates at the cost of increased sensitivity. 256QAM encodes 8 bits of information per symbol using 16 amplitude levels and 16 phase angles to create 256 signal points in the constellation diagram. 256 QAM provides the highest data rates among the discussed modulation schemes. However, the trade-off is heightened susceptibility to noise and interference. The complexity of 256 QAM constellation requires advanced receiver hardware with high accuracy and demodulation. Coding complements modulation by adding redundant information to transmitted data. This redundancy enables the receiver to correct errors that might occur during transmission. The choice of coding scheme impacts the error correction capabilities of the system. We have the forward error correction codes. 5G employs advanced FEC codes such as Low Density Parity Check or LDPC and Polar Codes. These codes offer strong error correction capabilities while minimizing the amount of redundancy added. We have rate matching to ensure that the encoded data fits within the available resources. A process called rate matching is used. It adapts the data rate to the available transmission bandwidth. We further have HARQ. HARQ, or Hybrid Automatic Repeat Request, enhances reliability by combining error correction with retransmission. If errors are detected, the receiver requests a retransmission of the erroneous data, reducing the likelihood of data loss. The heart of modulation and coding schemes lies in optimizing trade-offs to achieve efficient data transmission. First, we have the data rate. Higher order modulation and coding schemes increase the data rate, enabling faster transmission of information. Second, we have spectral efficiency which is achieved by transmitting more data per unit of bandwidth, maximizing the use of the available spectrum. The choice of modulation and coding directly influences the system's ability to maintain communication integrity even in the presence of noise and interference. To summarize, in today's lecture we covered an introduction to the architecture of 5G downlink, 5G NR physical downlink channels, downlink control information, then we proceeded with information about 5G NR transport downlink channels, and we ended the lecture with modulation and coding schemes in 5G downlink. To check your understanding on the contents of this lecture, you can check the MathWorks documentation page titled Understand 5G Downlink. Further, navigate the following hands-on example and answer the questions on the next slide. Some food for thought? On your own time, answer the following questions. What is the purpose of using beamforming in the downlink transmission? How does it improve the signal quality and coverage? Second question. Which modulation scheme is used in the example? How does it affect the signal quality and data rate? Three. How is the channel model incorporated into the downlink waveform generation? What are the factors that affect the channel model selection? And four, can you explain the role of the resource grid and the physical channels in the downlink waveform generation? Furthermore, to assess your understanding, please look at the following task. Change the number of resource blocks allocated to the physical downlink shared channel from 10 to 20. Analyze the impact on the generated waveform's bandwidth and capacity. The expected behavior, when the number of resource blocks allocated to the PDSCH is changed from 10 to 20, the expected output would be an updated generated waveform with a wider bandwidth and increased capacity. Some hints for you when you attempt this task. Locate the section of the code where the resource blocks are located at the PDSCH. Identify the variable or parameter that determines the number of resource blocks allocated. Modify the value of the variable or parameter from 10 to 20. The second hands-on assessment. 
Modify the beamforming weights in the code to steer the beam in a different direction. Observe the changes in the generated waveform and analyze the impact on the beamforming performance. The expected behavior is that the expected output would be an updated generated waveform with a changed beam direction. The changes in the waveform should reflect the new beamforming configuration resulting in different beamforming performance characteristics. Hint, pay attention to changes in the beamforming pattern, signal strength, and coverage area of the downlink transmission. Thank you.